episode 126. Are you ready to take your eBay business to the next level? Then hold on, because Ron and Ali are going to take you into the fast lane. With the latest tips and insights from some of the biggest and most successful sellers. Here on the So You Want to Sell on eBay podcast. Welcome once again to another episode of So You Want to Sell on eBay. I'm Ron LeBeau. And I'm Ali Young. Hey, everyone. We have with us from California, Sean Olson. How you doing, Sean? I'm doing great, guys. Thanks. Fantastic. How you doing in uh, Thailand there, Ali? I am doing marvelous. Great to have you with us, Sean. Thank yes, you. Yes, it sure is. So, Sean is the co-owner and operator of Yosemite Sean's eBay store, and he started this business in 2015. He sells Blu-ray DVD movies, comic books, and collectible toys. We got another one, Ron. We got another one who likes to have fun, I can tell. So, you, you, you must like, have hours and hours of fun in front of you. Like, you got all these DVDs to watch and stuff like that. Well, that is true. I do get a lot of movies to watch. I get to see all the movies, but, you know, it takes hours and hours of work to post it all on eBay and to uh, do everything and get the money, you know. I bet. I mean, so how does, I mean, I'm looking at this, actually. So how do DVDs sort of sign up in this world these days? Are are they still good sellers because people moving over to things like USB and stuff like that? That's true. That's really true. And you know what? When I go into Best Buy and and I look at the, the Blu-ray and DVD section and it, it's shrinking and it's shrinking and digital, the, the codes are taking over right now. Uh, but I'm trying to stay on the cutting edge by buying the 4K movies, getting as many of the digital codes as I can, you know, and um doing it that way and and uh uh that's why i started with the comic books because i know eventually the the disc thing is not going to sell very well so i started doing the comic books and the toys and all that too (laughs) yeah you know that's that's pretty smart to be diversified you know and and not just you know i mean sometimes you know sometimes depending on the niche you know if you if you have a niche that's you know that's timeless then that's one thing but you know to realize that maybe the dvd thing might uh Pass some time, uh, you know, in the future that, uh, you know, it's good to be able to have different options for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, I saw a few few years ago, you know, I needed a job to do and I was messing around on eBay and uh, I was watching all those shows, you know, uh, Pawn Stars, you know, those different shows. Oh, and yeah. They all say they're selling on uh, online, they would just say. And I said, I don't know much about computers, you know. I ha- In fact, the guys over at eBay, they pretty much taught me. You know, I'm an 80s kid, so the 80s, the school didn't really teach me. I called eBay. They kind of taught me how to do it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I started just selling some of my own movies. And... Uh, you know, one thing came to another. I said, man, all these other people uh, are doing it, you know. I, why can't I do this, you know. So I started, we invested a little bit of money. And, uh, it, man, that first year, it just really, really grew, you know, um, way bigger than we thought, you know. Um, and uh, that's been a couple, two and a half years ago. And I've just been keeping on doing it ever since. So are you able to do this full time then? I am able to do this full time. I'm uh, I, I'm a single father. I have two uh, teenage kids or teenage now. And, uh, you know, um, I drop them off at school and then I come home and I do listings. And if I don't have listings, I need to get out there and I got to find listings. That means you got to go to wherever that you have to go to get the things that you're going to sell on eBay. And that's the most important part, you know, is uh, getting, finding out what you're going to sell and getting what you're going to sell. It's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, you, you, Especially in in the uh, movie world, you kind of got to know if you're getting a good deal or not, right? I mean, because you have to make a profit on these things, and if you're overpaying, you're not gonna you know make any profit. So how well, uh, mm-hmm. how well are you at, at knowing what a movie's worth? You know what I did is um, before I even started, 
I I read everything in eBay that I could find. Uh, they said, oh, well, the best place to start out is e- the easiest place to start out is eBay. And I read everything and I looked up all the movies. The Disney ones are the best, you know, and I yeah. saw what they are selling for and uh, what they are going for, what people are auctioning them for, you know. So um, and I just studied it really hard, you know, and I had the time to do it. And I put the time in and you want also want to learn all the rules because there's a lot of little things you don't want to get caught up in because you can get banned for life, you know, from eBay just by not knowing a rule. Yeah. Um, wow. That doesn't yeah. sound like a whole lot of fun. I mean, <laughs> so you, you, how do you know? So fun. you're you're obviously buying these from I mean you're going like flea market. What, how are you getting your products here? I buy my movies wherever I can find them. I have friends that can bring them over. They do at times. I have a Craigslist ad. I do auctions on eBay. I buy them from the store. I have different connections that I've made over the years that I could go to to buy the movies at a discounted price. Mm -hmm. And you may only make uh, a dollar on some. You may make 10 or $20 on others. Um, Right. And in the end, you want to get it down to an average to where you're making a profit, not a loss. Yeah. So um, how, you know, do you, how do you how do you deal with the things like copyright then? So how, how do you know that these are always genuine? Because, you know, I come from Asia and you can get every movie for a dollar. Oh, yeah. I, you know, you really you got to um, you got to learn. You got to acquire the eye. And I oh, think collecting comics. We've books, had a few people yeah. with the eyes on over the years. Yeah, I think collecting comic books over the years had helped in toys that when you see something that's uh, if it's a Disney movie, you're going to look at it. It's going to be perfect in every way. You know, there's not going to be any problems. You look, you make sure uh, nothing's going to be misspelled on the covers. Yeah. Um, the backs of the discs are going to be a clear color or a uh, like a silver color, not never a blue color or a dark gold cover. Those are all uh, rewritable discs. Those are all fake. And then you got to look for the rewraps because people uh, they take them a used movie and then they put uh, just whatever they can find in it as a, a little card or whatever, and then they rewrap it and they sell it as new. So you got to learn how. How to recognize that a good way to recognize that is if the slip covers are wrapped in plastic that's a dead giveaway disney never rewraps the slip covers in plastic you know and that's a dead giveaway that that's a uh, I, I ain't bringing my dodgy cds to you i mean geez you, you're, like, you're like a connoisseur of dvds I can pick out all the fake ones out of the the real ones. And if it's real enough to pass me, it's real enough to get sold on my side. (laughs) Wow. Wow, I'm scared. (laughs) Yeah, I am too. That's pretty incredible. (laughs) So you're you're a one man show. Are you you doing all of this on your own? Uh, Well, uh, we do shows. We do comic conventions. We just started doing the Claremont, California, uh, collectible show i've been doing that done about four shows there um and then next year we're going to do the ontario comic convention um so yeah i bring my kids out they help me with that and then as far as the work on ebay it's my job i do it i'm able to do it all and get all of the orders out every day that's pretty cool, man. I tell you what, that's really awesome. And you know what? The other thing we like to promote on this show is entrepreneurial spirit. Spirit, and you know, it sounds like you're you're doing that with your kids, man. It's just just awesome, man. I love to hear that myself. Um, Thank you. And I know Ali does too. So that's really cool. So what what parts do your kids uh, play in this uh, in business? Basically, uh, they go to the shows with me. And uh, they be good. <laughs> it's the biggest Security. Part. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And they help me set up oh, and yeah. tear down That's and, cool. and oh, watch. That's cool. And they're my watch, you know, because all the other guys, they do it by themselves. They don't have anybody to watch this stuff. So um, I don't suggest... Uh, Well, I I tried to do it with what I have all on eBay. I think eBay, 
is good for a, a huge bulk of the money that you you need to get to you know pay bills on this, but you need to supplement. Uh, I suppose it depends on what you do too. I find I need to supplement with doing other things also. Yep. So, yeah. But, but well, eBay's the main income, man. Yeah. Um, so what's what's an average? It. What's okay? So give us a day day in the life of Sean. So you would go out hunting for a DVD. Then what's your sort of process? Because it's such a common question we get asked all the time on this show. You know, from people who are listening, and we had one yesterday as well. Is they can't work out how to do everything on their own, manage it all. You know, with the time, with the kids. I mean, how do you? Because you've you've got over four thousand feedback in two years, and that's just the feedback that you've got. You've you've really gone quite big, quite fast. I mean, how do you manage that with the kids and everything? You know, you just you work it like you would a job, um, and, and more. Uh, I work at nights. I work in the morning. I get up in the morning. I I just got to make sure all my listings are staying up. You know, so I, I, I do my little listings check, make sure all the ones that are ending are going to are going to relist. That's first of all. And you just have to stay every time I get uh, a shipment of things to put up. I just I put it right up. I try not to wait, you know, get it up. You know, as fast as you can, the faster you can get it up, you know, and then because there's going to be more coming in and you can't have boxes just sitting there not, you know, making money. You know, you got to list everything that you or, you know, try to list everything that you get, you know, Mm. uh, within the reasonable amount of time and you just uh the first thing i do is my i send everybody every day i send out the orders i take it to the post office and that's the first thing i do is make sure everybody gets taken care of all the customers that have already bought and then i'm free to go about and do my business um you know i mean you really that, that must have been over the years from you know making the mistakes and stuff like that you sort of streamlined it Exactly. Yeah, I learned how just to uh, uh, don't. I'm a big procrastinator, but on this, um, <laughs> yeah, aren't we all? Uh, That's all our for. And how do you yeah. know? So, have you got these? St- I mean, DVDs, I suppose, are quite easier. You can sort of stack them up in a row and stuff. But do you have them sure. all in one section? And you know, if I told you, if I asked you where for Christmas DVD is, you would know exactly where that is. Well, yeah, um, I've you know, I just got I've. I got shelves all over the house, and that's where oh, nice. I store it. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It's in the lounge. Go to the lounge. No, no, it's in the bedroom. Yeah. So um, they are in alphabetical order, so I could tell you where uh, a movie is at any time, and it makes it easy when I go to gather up the stuff because that's the hardest part is getting up, having your coffee, and, oh, man, I got to gather up. <laughs> Sometimes on Monday I might have 60 movies to find, you know. In, yeah, with, yeah. In there. Yeah, so. Um, it is fun by the sounds of it, like, Sean. I mean, it sounds like you, you've created something here. That, yeah, that's what I tried to do with it. You know, I used to be a truck driver and I hated that, you know, with a passion. I mean, I did my job for 12 years and everything, but um, this is just so much better because I can, um, I can, it's more fun. You know, I can do kind of what I want. So tell us about that. I mean, you know, you, you had this trucking job and you were supporting your, your yourself and your kids with that. How did you get to the point where you you realized, you know what, I can finally quit that job and do this full time? When did that, that light come on for you? That never happened. I'd, I'd like to say that I, I had, you know, I had some health problems. I couldn't drive anymore at all. And uh, I had to I had to jump into something else. And I was having a, a hard time making money. And I found this and I, I said, you know, this is what I want to do. You know, I started doing it a little bit. And uh, as soon as I fi- found out that I can really make money at it, I uh, I just made the decision, you know, to uh, do this for as long as I can. So, um, you know, I, I don't call myself fully successful on this yet. I'm not making tons of money uh, right now. Um you got to have money to start. You got to have a little bit to start, which we did. 
And uh, you can start with nothing. I started out, when I first started, I, I tried to put as little money as I could into this company. And I prided myself on how little I actually had to put in it. But... <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> but... Uh, some time went by and uh, you really you're better off if you have a little bit of cash that you could sink into it and then you can get yourself rolling and get a lot of listings up of different various things, sellable things, you know, because when you first start out, a lot of times the stuff that you have is kind of lower grade, you know, yep. um, and, and you're starting out with that. So the more money you can scrape up to start your business, the better off you're going to be in the long run, you know? Well, I'll tell you this, Sean. You know, you, you say you might not be as successful as you care to be, but I'll tell you what, it sounds like you're doing a really a, a whole lot of the things that you need to be doing. And you know what? You know, not settling for where you're at now is a bonus for you. I mean, seriously, you're doing a lot of good things, and man, it's just awesome. Um, again, you know, you're bringing your kids into this for you, with you, and uh, you're growing this thing together. That's really cool, man. I'm really hoping to grow it uh, to to where if my kids ever need help and need a job, that I could hire them. You know, too. You know, uh, because. Yep. You know, the way we always say, hey, if other people are doing it and if it's something you want to do, you can do it, too. It's just you got to put the work into it. And that's the main thing. Ron and Ali will be right back after this short break. Life is full of numbers. Our brains process literally hundreds of numbers and equations every hour of every day. When it comes to your business, give your brain a break as well as peace of mind that the numbers are figuring up as they should with MyCost Pro. MyCost Pro is an easy-to-use automated eBay bookkeeping program for Excel that imports sales data directly from your seller account. MyCost Pro automatically generates accounting and performance reports to show you your true bottom-line profit. You can even view and edit active listing details such as price and quantity and relist unsold items directly from MyCost Pro. All you need is Excel on your Windows PC. Take control of your business and free up those long nights of crunching the numbers. Visit MyCostPro.com for a 21-day no-obligation free trial using coupon code PODCAST. Exclusively for So You Want to Sell on eBay podcast listeners. So, you have an idea, a big idea, and you're ready to jump into the world of e-commerce. Awesome. But where to start? The answer is only a click away. At solutionsforecommerce.com, you'll find available services to help manage, audit, or even build your e-commerce site from the ground up. With over 10 years of experience in developing and managing channels on sites like Amazon, eBay, Shopify, and Etsy, Solutions for E-commerce can help you to grow your small or large business. Take a step back from the technical and do what you do best and let Solutions for E-commerce handle the tedious stuff like creating, reviewing, adding, or removing listings, setting up or organizing store categories, even merchandising and customer support. Find out why their clients say that their business wouldn't be what it is today without the help from Solutions for E-commerce. Visit SolutionsforEcommerce.com and take your e-commerce business to the next level. That's Solutions, the number four, e-commerce.com. Use Pro Promo code eBay at checkout for an exclusive discount. Be sure to check out so you want to sell on eBay.com for the latest podcasts and all the information you need to get selling fast. So you talked about that. You talked about that money earlier. So do you? So the money you initially make, you just reinvest all of that back into the business, and you just keep. You keep doing that for a while, so you're not actually physically taking any money for a while. You just exactly. Just like any business that you're going to grow, unless you start off cash rich, which most people don't have that, uh, you got to start off. You can't take out much money uh, to get yourself rolling, you know, um, otherwise you're just going to defeat your whole purpose. So you do need some money to start out. It's not a magical thing it takes a lot of work it's not a a you know one of those 
fly by night things, mm. you, you got to put the work into it. I started out selling Levi's jeans and movies of my own. And believe it or not, Levi's jeans sell great. But finding them yeah. is also hard, you know, to do, you know. Um, yeah. Well, you know what, uh, Sean, you know, there's a lot of people out there listening right now that are in your same situation with with a job, maybe not physically, maybe not a medical condition, but they're not liking their job. And you know what? They're going to be inspired by your story here. It's really kind of an awesome story. And and uh, the fact that you every day get up and every night you work late if you need to. I mean, so it's not a get rich quick scheme we know that um you know in fact most people that we talk to spend a lot of time uh in their business but they wouldn't trade it for anything um yeah. do you have if you had your health would you go back to trucking or are you still like this i could go back to trucking but i i wouldn't unless it was an emergency and i really needed to go you know because if if this did not work out you know and, and of course i would go back you know it's not that bad the part of this that i i really love the comic book side of it which i'm trying to grow you know we we started off i had um i was doing the movies i was doing really well and i had these three boxes of comics that i collected from the 80s you know when i was a kid me and my dad you know collected them and stuff and my brother and i got these comics out and i said you know why don't we try selling some of these, you know, uh, back in the eighties, the market crashed. So it kind of, I kind of had a bad, you know, uh, taste in my mouth from losing all that money off my GI Joe number two that crashed, you know, the next day. And, you know, they, you know, they, they, they jack up the prices and then the next day, you know, they, they would fall. Um, but I got into the comics again, you know, uh, it had been on and off throughout my life. I've been into the comics. I got those boxes out and lo and behold, I had some good ones in there. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, man, that got me rolling. And I started out with those three long boxes and now I have, uh, you know, six, 7,000 in storage and we do shows <laughs> roughly. Roughly, and yeah, I do, yeah. Oh, I, I buy collections, you know, that's my favorite thing to do is buy a huge comic collection and just start going through it and finding the keys, you know, and and wow. you, you you have to do the same thing with the comics, a lot broader, a lot bigger market than the movies. You know, the movies is wow. easy. Uh, eBay, when you first get into eBay and start looking at it, it looks huge. But if you narrow it down to movies or comics, uh, comics is a huge uh, uh, thing on eBay, though. Uh, you, but you can uh, narrow the movies down, you know, and see what's out there to find out the prices. You know, uh, you can narrow down the comics to find out what auctions are down there. But you have to sit there and work at it a lot. So you're on your instead of on your phone, on Facebook or Twitter, whatever you do. I sit there on eBay. I try to find uh, people who need money that that need to sell their comics, you know, at, that uh, auctions that look like they're going to end low so I could get it. And then I, I'll send them out to CGC or I'll go out on the road. My favorite thing is to hit the road and find them myself. You know, I hate to, <laughs> no, to just, do it over the Internet. That sounds know? fun, you know, just out there comic hunting. Yeah, yeah it's all, man. So yeah. you, you sounds, again, you're you're a bit of a connoisseur, I bet, with comics as well. So do you have your own little secret safe where you've got like number one Spider Man or something? No, I I've, um, I if I had it, I would sell it, you oh, know, okay. because I'm at that level where even when I get one, where like, hey, I want to keep this one, it's so great, I have to sell it. Last year, I got a comic. Uh, it was an Amazing Spider Man 300. And I sent it to CGC, had it great. It came back at 9.8. I sold that for $1,050. That bought me a new computer. It bought me a whole new setup. I was doing it all off a tablet. I bought that one Holy comic cow, for $300. Man. I was able to make, you know, $600 profit off of that one comic. And that bought, you know, what I'm on 
today I was on this little cheap tablet. Now I got a decent, you know, laptop and all that. Wow. So I hit those ever so often on the comics where you'll get a jackpot. And, <laughs> and that's what I'm always looking for. So you when know? you that, see when you see that jackpot, you know, when you're out on the road and you see that jackpot, you know, Ron's, Ron's talked about this before in other episodes. How do you keep your face straight? I mean, how do you you know that that's the freaking that's the one? I mean, how do you like, yeah, I'll give you ten dollars for it? Well, you know, now you're getting into the secrets of the trade, oh. but you know what? I'm gonna be honest here. And um if if they know what it is, you're going to have to pay a, a substantial sum of money to get the good stuff. You know, if they know what it is, if they don't know what it is, uh, I try to keep a straight face and just, uh, you know, I have 10,000 comics in storage. You know, I say I have all this already. I can only offer you, you know, this much. Try not to get all excited and jump up and down like you won the lottery. <laughs> um, yeah. I try not to do. Keep a straight face. Okay, and um, because most of the people out there think what they have is worth a lot of money and it's not, you know. Um, so usually what, like that $1,000 book I got, I didn't just get that off of, you know, somebody off the street. That was from one of my other dealers, you know, and, and we work together, you know, to kind of help each other out. One day they're at my booth buying stuff and we give each other, try and give each other decent deals, you know. Sure. You know, and, and you know, so a lot of times you're going to end up paying, you're going to end up paying for the good stuff, you know. <laughs> The good stuff. <laughs> but no, that's awesome. But you know what? Your expertise, you know, kind of, you know, keeps you in the game and it kind of keeps you, you know, uh, keeping people honest. I mean, seriously. So when you go in and you you know the value of a book or a comic book or a DVD, you know, you, you got to be fair. But, you know, you got to get the best deal you can make as well. Yeah, that's true. Um you have to go in there and uh, most people, they've looked it up at eBay. They didn't look at the sold listings. They looked at what everybody's asking for. Yeah. And they think they might have something huge. And and you got to say, hey, well, you got to look at the sold listings because you could ask whatever you want. Doesn't mean you're going to get it. Amen, gotta, brother. Yeah. And then uh, but um, That's it's a whole lot of fun. I mean, that's yeah. great advice, you know, and for people who aren't aware, that's under the advanced tab, you know, next to the search. And yeah, because like you say, you could see hundreds of the item on there for a thousand dollars, but they're only selling for forty dollars. So it, it is good advice to do that. It is. So we got it last is. question running out of time here. We got we got a couple of minutes left. So the one I like to ask is where do you see yourself in the future here, Sean? What, what are you what are you hoping to, to grow from this? Um, in the future, I'm hoping to be mainly a comic store or a comic shop online mainly. And I want to uh, grow this to do the big shows like San Diego Comic Con and other ones like that. I'm hoping to do Los Angeles Comic Con at the end of next year. And I just uh, I know that eBay is always going to be the big amount, you know, but you, if you can find a place to go to do shows, anywhere you can make money, I found out it helps. It helps a lot, you know. Uh, so if you're into comics, go to a comic thing. If you're into cars, go down to where they're doing the cars, you know, in Pasadena right. Park, uh, wherever it is, you know, in your, in your neck of the woods. You know, uh, whatever you're doing, find out as much as you can do about it. I think... In the next couple of years, I really think that um, I'll probably that I could grow this company probably five times the size or so, uh, just with a lot of hard work. Well, we're gonna have you on in three years, and we're gonna see how you're doing on that. We're gonna hold you accountable here. Right? It, sure. Awesome! I, I'd I'd love to come on again in three years. That'd be great. And it, you just yeah. and it's again, it's another same story where you're having fun with this. So you're doing it on eBay. You're also doing those shows, which I imagine is really really fun as well. You know, and you're incorporating mm. it all together and. So just one question, because my mum, she does like shows in, in English, just children's clothing. So would you, 
would you sell the comics for the same price on eBay as you do at the show? Or, you know, do you sell them for more at these shows? Well, that's a good question. You know, um, it's tricky. It, when I'm at the show, I figure I could knock off a percentage of the fees, you know, but you have to remember that you're paying to be at the show, too. So you have to yep. figure out what that percentage is, which usually ends up coming out pretty close to what you're paying in fees. So you want to try to keep the prices the same. But if you're at a show and say Stan Lee's going to be there, you might want to uh, up the price of your Spider-Man 300 or something that a fan might want to, you know, it sounds bad, but it really, it's not, you know, it, they all do it, you know, so know. If, yeah. So um, maybe up the price of the comic for the artist that's going to be there. Uh, but, you know, yeah, it, it's a, it's a real fickle market. So sometimes you just got to leave the prices alone and, and cut deals and, and you know, so it, it's up to you. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think you sort of win over the years of doing it. So, well, wow, like Ron said, we're going to have to get you back on, Sean. This is great. I mean, you, you, again, you're doing something that you really enjoy doing. You've, you tried something out a couple of years ago and it's working for you. So that's the sort of story to anyone who's thinking about starting an eBay store. Really, like Sean and any everyone who comes on the show, is just start with stuff around your house, grab stuff, yep. put it on, and um, just see, see how you get on with it. So... Thanks for joining us, Sean. We've really enjoyed today. Thanks for sharing your story with us. Oh, thank you, man. And yeah, if they can do it, if I can do it, anybody else can do it. You know, it just takes a lot of hard work, dedication. Definitely. We will post all the notes from today's interview on our show notes page, which can be found at www.soyouwannasellonebay.com forward slash show notes. Sean, before you leave us, what's the best way that these comic guys and everyone in the world can sort of get in contact with you? Well, right now I'm on eBay. My my name is Yosemite Shans. And if uh, you're on your computer, you go under your cart, you could uh, punch in user ID. And if you punch in Yosemite Shans, all in lowercase, my store will pop up. I'm also on Facebook. Uh, and it's also called Yosemite Shans on Facebook. Um, you can reach me on Facebook and on eBay. And... Uh, all my comics are uh, mainly buy it now, and everything's on best offer. So you can send me offers, and I take most good offers. Nice. Love it. Okay, well, we'll put all that on the show notes page. So come over to say you want to sell on eBay.com and go to the show notes for this great podcast that we've just done. Uh, well, thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks, Sean, for joining us. From everyone here at So You Want to Sell on eBay, I'm Ali Young. And I'm Ron LeBeau. That's all for this episode of So You Want to Sell on eBay. Be sure to check out our next episode or any past episodes by going online to so you want to sell on eBay.com. Also, be sure to follow us on your favorite social media sites, Facebook.com forward slash So You Want to Sell on eBay and Twitter at Your eBay Podcast. Thanks for listening. And until next time, happy selling. Have an idea for a topic or know someone who would like to be on the show? Let us know. Just go to www.soyouwantosellonebay.com forward slash interview. We look forward to hearing from you. This podcast was produced in part by Pro Voice Works.